Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Um, welcome to file 110 lecture series number 4. And this video is to discuss on the topic of accounting equation effect and also on the dual entry because these two topics is interrelated. Okay, let's um, have a look, um, a re revision on what is the accounting equations. So the basic accounting equations is asset equals to honest equity add with the liability of the business. So this is the basic accounting equations. And every transaction actually will have effect to these equations uh, by the end of uh, the analysis of each, each transactions, they should balance, I mean, the asset side and the honest equity liability side should be equals to. And the um, expanded accounting equation is whereby the honest equity is being expanded to capital deduct drawings at revenue. The expenses where the revenue and expenses is actually comprise the um, net profit if the revenue more than expenses or net loss if the expenses more than the revenue. And the dual entry mean, means that every transaction must have two effects means that one account one account to be debited and another account must be credited so that is um, called a dual effect now let's have a clear on uh, how this transaction actually being evolved i mean record in the uh, business transactions uh, in our accounts in the books of accounts so let's say okay first the business started it's nothing in the business it just has a name let's say the name of the business my base so the owner of my base start the business at first February 2020 by brought in the 100,000 of cash and the deposit the money into the business bank account okay that is the first transactions that actually really affect uh, the business so then these transactions will affect means that the business will have 100,000 cash money at the bank however this 100,000 actually comes from the owner and remember the business entity concept where we need to recognize whenever the owner gives something to business we need to recognize that we owe to the owner but without the um, due date of settlement and the old uh, i mean the debt to the owner is being translated into uh, an account we call a capital so whenever you see capital so the capital is actually business debt to the owner so now in the business we have one hundred thousand cash at bank and we have a debt to the owner that is a capital 100,000. So both are increased. I mean, now it's add up in the business. So we can actually um, using, uh, as we call, um, a declare a formula. Uh, that is asset drawing expenses, capital, liability, revenue. This is one of um, uh, a formula that you can use um, to convince uh, how the dual entry should be uh, okay whenever asset drawing expenses 
whenever these three increase, then the said account, the account should be debited. Whenever the asset um, drawing expenses decrease from the business, then the account should be credited. For example, just now, the money uh, uh, in the bank of the business bank account has been increased and the money is actually an asset. So the asset increase, so the money in the bank, the cash at bank should be debited. If the money from the bank is been taken out, I mean decreased, so that cash at bank should be credited. But it's vice versa with the capital liabilities revenue. Whenever capital increase, the account should be uh, credit. Same goes to liability and revenue. So whenever you have a debt uh, uh, to the supplier, for example, it's a, it is a liability. So whenever you make a promise to the supplier, so you adding up your debt, uh, the business debt to the supplier, so your supplier's account should be on the credit side. So whenever capital, liability, and also the revenue decrease, for example, you paid out, paid out the uh, supplier. So uh, business debt to the debt supplier reduced. So sub debt supplier's account should be on the debit side. The amount should be on the debit side. So you, you actually will reduce the debt of that supplier. Some people say that this um, formula is not really a system in uh, uh, formulating uh, or come up with the solutions. It's okay. You can use your own um, formula to um, memorize or making sure that your um, dual entry is correct. Okay, now, now uh, back to our effect just now, the transactions where you deposit uh, the money from the owner, uh, uh, 100,000 into the bank account just now, because uh, we say that the capital, uh, the capital increase, right? So capital is part of on owner's equity, so we can usually write in our answer. Um, or we can explain that the owner's equity increased and the capital account will be on the credit side because if you use the uh, other clear formula just now the capital uh, increase must be on credit side so we write or record uh, uh, capital account on the credit side and the cash at bank just now has been increased cash at bank is an asset whenever asset increase it should be on the debit side so you will record uh, bank account on the debit side okay now we already have 100,000 cash at bank and 100,000 of capital uh, from the previous transactions. Now, let's look at the second transition. The owner bought uh, fixtures and fittings on the 2nd February for the shop and valued at 8,000 ringgit and paid by business check. So when you paid out with a check, that you are using cash at bank so the cash at bank has been decreased 8000 ringgit and you are adding up the features and fittings 
with the same value that you have taken out. So you can see that the increase 8,000 ringgit off, which is 1050. So your dual entry record. Cash at bank just now is an asset. So the asset has been decreased. Uh, so the cash uh, at bank account will be on the credit side. So your record, credit bank. And features and fittings also an asset. So you're right, asset, that particular asset has been increased. So features and fittings account will be on the debit side. We write debit, features and fittings. Now, after the second transactions, this is how it look inside your business, the my business. We have 100,000 of capital on the capital side then on the asset side is 92,000 of cash at bank and also 8,000 ringgit value of features and fittings and if we look into the account equation it still equal asset equals to or is PT because the liability is zero Now let's have a look in another transitions. Let's say on the same day, um, the business, my business purchase goods on credit, uh, 10 units of microwave oven, um, because this company sell of the microwave oven from the F East neighborhood and the price is 200 ringgit each. With a credit term of five stroke fourteen, um, comma net thirty, and 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 that one is actually for net. Okay. Now have a look at the credit term because um, um, some of you still have not understand why there is a, such a term. Normally in Malaysian invoice um, they write the term in full sentence um, but uh, some other countries um, only use um, this this type of coding uh, for the credit term so you need to understand what it means and some companies use this okay when it says 5 stroke 14 comma and 30 or sometimes it says net net so the five is actually the percentage cash discount discount will be given the cash discount will be given to um, the one who received the invoice if if the company pays within the 14 days so the 14 is actually the number of days that the, the customer can delay the payment delay the payment that um, eligible to get that cash discount if um, if the number of days taken more than 14 days from the date of invoice so the uh, customer uh, is not eligible to get any discount. No discount will be given if you pay after uh, the the due date of that um, cash discount date. And the last part is actually the maximum number of days that you can delay for the settlement of the invoice. So, as a recap, the 5% discount will be given if the payment made within 15 days from the date of invoice. So, if the payment made on the 16 days onwards, no discount will be given. 
on but the the last day what the last day due is the 30th day so when the um the transactions uh, just now purchasing uh, the trading goods from the supplier so it does not involve the cash money so your cash at bank will not be disturbed because you receive the trading goods but you only uh, issue you only um, taken out uh, the promise you just issue a promise to the supplier that you will pay later so no money uh, at all involved on this day you only receive the trading goods so you will um, have a debt to the account payable f is number height a two a two thousand ringgit because you purchase 10 units of uh, micro oven that value 200 ringgit each and remember you have must you must have a two effects uh, you already have a, a adapt to the supplier and you receive a trading goods from that supplier so the trading goods we will uh, record in purchases account so all the purchases account will be recorded uh, recording the uh, trading goods at the cost price so the dual entry record just now should be um, the account payable f is number hat is a liability to the business so we will write the liability has increased so apf is number hat account will be on the credit side I mean the amount of 2000 in the account of ap is number hat will be on the credit side so the record is credit ap f is number hat the purchases is classified as expenses so the, remember just now when i said trading goods that we purchased are purchases we record in purchases and the purchases is expenses so we will write the effect expenses has increased and the purchases account will be on the debit side so you will record debit purchases so after uh, the third transactions we will visualize the business is like this we have 100,000 of capital 92,000 of cash and bank 8,000 of features and fittings 2000 of uh, adapt to supplier and another 2000 of expenses so if you do the um, calculations uh, for the account equation it must be balanced So let's say we return a, a, a trading goods um, to the supplier because of the faulty. So let's say on the 3rd of February, the business returned a unit of macro oven that we purchased from every near hut because it was faulty. Now let's have a look on the effect of that transaction that is the transaction that we uh, return that faulty goods okay it involves the supplier 
because we have yet to pay the supplier. So whenever we return mm, the trading goods to that particular supplier, so the supplier should reduce our debt, right? So from um, in the beginning, uh, in when we uh, bought that purchase goods, uh, we bought uh, 2,000 ringgit value of the microwave ovens, the trading goods. So when we return one, so decrease 200 ringgit. So your debt to supplier APF East and Ramarhat has been decreased to only 1,800 ringgit. And we need to record that uh, return on the account. Another account that we need to create is purchases return. And the purchases return is actually entirely right away the purchases because and, and we you shouldn't um, reduce that purchases because purchases is something uh, trading goods that can be sell off yeah? uh, but the uh, the 200 you cannot sell off that one uh, actually we have returned it to the supplier so the dual entry record or dual entry effects is the return is actually reducing uh, the debt to supplier so we will write the liability decreased so your um, account APF is the number that should be debited so you will debit the account payable FE number hat. and another effect is the goods has been returned actually will reduce the purchases cost so you will say that the expenses has been decreased so you need to create another account that to show your purchases has been decreased that is the purchases return account to be created and created the purchases return. So this is the after the transactions just now. Uh, first, the money comes to uh, for the business hundred thousand. Then you bought the uh, features and fittings. Then you bought trading goods. Then you return the trading goods. So when all this transaction has occurred. So this is the visual inside the business. So let's have another example continuously. So let's say on 14 business settle of the debt to F is number height. So we, we have the uh, the debt to supplier is 1,800. Remember just now we have returned. So at 14, the debt to a piece number is no longer at 2,000 but 1,800 because we already returned the 200 ringgit of uh, trading goods. And remember the term that uh, that agreed by AP's number had uh, FE's number had said that if we pay within 14 days, we bought on 2nd February, so we'll calculate 14, so it will be 16 of February is the last day to get the discount. So when we pay on 14, so we are eligible to get a discount. So we only pay 95% of the debt because another 5% is should be our cash discount. OK. 
Okay. When we pay, of course, we pay with money in the bank. So your cash money at the bank will be decreased. But not 1,800. Remember, we are eligible to get the 5% discount. We only pay 95% of the debt to APFE Sendria Merhat. So out of 95% from 1,800 ringgit that we owe to AP Sendria Merhat. So it will be only 1,710 cash money that should be paid to AFI Sendria Merhat. So since the cash money only available in the bank, so your cash at bank will be reduced 1,710. And your liability to AP number height now becomes zero because we pay all the settlement. Settle off means that we pay all. If you say it, uh, it um, decreased of liability 1,800 ringgit, but we only pay 1,710. So there's a gap. So that gap, do not forget to record the discount received from the supplier. That is 90 ringgit discount received that we successfully received from the AP Sendia Berhad. AP FE Sendia Berhad. So your dual entry code for the effect. So the payment is reducing the debt to supplier. So the debt has been reduced, the liability decreased. So your APF East Number Hat account will be on the debit side. So we'll say that we debit APF East Number Hat. And the cash at bank reduced. Of course, the cash at bank is an asset. So asset has been decreased. Bank account will be on your credit side. And the supplier give discount, the cash discount to uh, the, my business. So discount is resulting the discount received, and discount received is classified as the revenue. So you will say the revenue increased. So you will be recording the discount received on the credit side. Now, let's have a recap on the, the definitions of trade discount and the cash discount. So, trade discount is only occur during the sales and purchases transactions. Remember when you go to, let's say you want to buy uh, a computer from a, sub, uh, a seller. Normally, they will quote you a higher price. Now, let's say this is that okay, this is 2,300 uh, 2, ringgit. So you can negotiate the price. I mean, you do try to get the discount. You will say that I'm still a student, I need the computer, blah blah. And, and the supplier, okay, agreed to sell you at 2,200 ringgit. So that is we call as trade discount before actually they write off the invoice. So that particular um, situation rarely to have an evidence because normally when we receive the invoice, the invoice will say 2,200, not the 2,300, the original price quoted to you. 
So since we do not have an evidence, an accountant cannot record it in the books or in our account. Remember, objective concept. We should have an evidence to record the transitions already occurred. Since the trade discount do not have an evidence, so we rarely can ensure that the discount can be acknowledged. So we blanketly say that the trade discount should not be recorded in the account. However, cash discount occurs when the payment of the, the uh, payment of the debt is less than what we owe to the supplier or the customer paid to us less than what they owe to us. So uh, we record an account of this cash discount because when they pay less, of course there's a gap in our books. There is an evidence. The evidence is actually in the invoice because the invoice is already stated. Okay, you can have this discount if you have if you pay less or uh, equal to how many number of days according to the term in that invoice. So since we have the evidence, we can record them. Okay, let's say after we pay the supplier now, no more supplier debt, right? <coughs> but we have still have the one hundred thousand capital. We have the cash at bank of ninety thousand two hundred and ninety. We have a thousand of fittings. We have discount received. We have the purchases to uh, thousand ringgit, but uh, will be lessened with the purchases written off two hundred. So this is what visualized in our business after all the transactions. Okay, now let's have a look at another example of the transactions. We sell off our trading goods. Let's say on the fifteenth of February, business sold for unit of the micro oven uh, with a price of 300 ringgit. Now you can see this price is still called a selling price because our cost price is 200, the selling price is 300. And the turn we give to our customer J Enterprise is 5% if J Enterprise pay 7 or less days from the date of invoice means that if J Enterprise uh, pay uh, 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 before 22, 22 of her body, so uh, J Enterprise is eligible to get a discount. So when we sell off, means that You have a transition of sales because remember just now we cannot deduct from the purchases because the price of the goods is no longer two hundred because the price in purchases account is two hundred but the but the, the sell off price is the selling price is three hundred so you need to open up another account we call sales according this uh, the sales price four times 300 is 1200 worth value of sales so now we have uh, sales and also we have customer who promise us to pay in the future 1200 it does not involve money here yeah okay because we only send the goods to J Enterprise, but only J Enterprise promise us to pay later. 
but the money has not been exchanged yet. So the dual account equation effect and dual entry records. So AR account receivables J Enterprise uh, debt is an asset to the business because J Enterprise promise to be in the future. So we will say that the asset has been increased. So the asset is the name of the customer, ARJ Enterprise. So the account, ARJ Enterprise, will be on the debit side. The good sent to the customer is sales. So sales is classified as revenue. So you will write revenue increased and the sales account will be on the credit side. Okay, once the sales transactions has occurred, so this is how it looks like in the My Business. So let's say J Enterprise return a unit of microwave oven on the next day. So the debt of J Enterprise, of course, will be reduced, right? So one unit will cost you 300 ringgit. So you, the J, AR J Enterprise will be decreased uh, 300 ringgit. And we need to create another account that we call sales return. So your effect and will enter record. The return will be reducing the debt of the customer. So you will write uh, the asset decrease. Remember just now? ARG enterprise debt is an asset. So when customer owe us, we consider them asset. But we, if we owe to supplier, it will be a liability. Always remember that. Do not be confused. So we will credit ARG ARG enterprise account. And the goods return to uh, goods returned by the customer is actually reducing our revenue. So we will write the revenue decreased. So we will create an account that we call sales return account, and we will debit that account of sales return. Okay, move on to next transaction. Let's say the next transaction on 17th of February, owner transfer 1000 from bank to cash on hand. So it's not, nothing actually they buy, just transfer between the two. So, Now, when we transfer from bank to cash or cash uh, to bank, so one will be reduced and another one will be increased, right? So here, it's from bank to cash. So cash at bank is decreased and the cash on hand will be increased. So previously, we do not have cash on hand. So now we need to create another account to show that we have cash on hand, 1,000 ringgit. Right? So the effect, the accounting equation effect, and also the dual entry record for that transfer. So money from the bank is, has been outflowed 
from uh, the, the bank account. So as this kind of this asset has been decreased because money in the bank, cash at bank is asset. So you will credit the bank account because it was outflowed. But the money on hand is added up. So another asset, another of the another of your asset has been increased. That is the cash on hand. So your cash on hand account will be on the debit side. Okay, after all the transactions that we occurred just now, so these are what uh, the your your business look like. Yeah? Okay, let's have another transactions. Okay, let's say on the nineteenth February, ro owner wrote uh, a check of two hundred and ninety ringgit to pay his half expenses and also took a unit of microwave oven for personal use. If you remember, um, in journal transactions, you should uh, uh, differentiate, uh, uh, wrote it a different journal, it means that the cash is for a cash disbursement journal and uh, for uh, taken out the trading goods should be on general general so those two are different so when we taken out the check for personal use so it was outflowed from the cash at bank right so the cash at bank has been uh, decreased Right, it can be squeezed. So now your cash at bank only have eighty nine thousand because it has been decreased two hundred and ninety. Not the cash on hand because it says that a check. And your trading goods because of course the owner will take out the trading goods at the cost price. So your purchases account will be reduced of 200 ringgit and we should recognize there is a drawings remember the business entity concept we should separate the owners or the personal transactions and in a separate and to be separate with the business transactions so when owner took for personal so you need to have another account that we call drawings. Oops. And the drawings will add the two. The 290 check and also the 200 ringgit value of trading goods. So your drawings uh, total is 490. your um, accounting equation effect on that tra particular transactions so money in the bank has been reduced so you will write asset has been decreased so you will credit the cash at bank the value of the goods purchased has been reduced so you will write expenses decreased because uh, it's taken from from the purchases account so your purchases account will be on the credit side and remember you need to recognize that the owner's claim for the business asset has been reduced so because the drawing is actually apart from the owner's equity so you will say that owner's equity has been decrease because no longer owner can claim from the business because the owner already take out 
or take out the cash at bank and also has taken out the trading goods of 490 so that 490 is no longer being can be claimed from uh, business by the owner so you will debit the drawing accounts because previously there is no drawing accounts now it has <laughs> the drawings now appear so we debit drawing accounts okay this is um auto auto transactions this is uh, uh the, the visual uh what is left of the audit transitions in the my business okay let's see another transition another transition it is on 20 31st of february a van was bought using the higher purchase loan from the g bank now when we took a loan to buy the van we normally do not see the money transactions yes we will receive <coughs> we we will receive uh, the van okay let's say this 150,000 the value so we receive the vehicle with the value of 150 and we owe to Chibang because we purchased that uh, van. So you now incur, now have the adapt to Chibang in the form of higher purchase loan. So the effect to accounting equation for that particular transaction a lorry or a van is a non-current asset that is added up to the business so the we write asset has been increased and we will credit the uh, sorry debit the vehicle accounts because we received that um, vehicle the van just now 150,000 However, previously we do not owe anyone. Now we promise the G Bank we will pay later for the van. So we actually a promise uh, to pay. So we have a debt to G Bank. So that will be recognized as a liability. So we will write liability increased and we uh, create a loan account because a loan uh, is classified as non-current liability. We shouldn't just put the G bank because G bank probably will uh, mislead uh, the people who read uh, your account. Uh, uh, say that G Bank probably your supplier is a short term that no you shouldn't be misleading people uh, we must be clear on that so we should put the name or the term of the account for purchasing that van because we use the higher purchase loan so you need to create the loan account so you will credit that loan account well you can put the higher purchase loan or just put the loan but the term loan and uh, if you have uh, any other loan so you need to uh, differentiate which loan uh, you owe okay this one is to g bank so you need to um, put in a detail for the loan with uh, a detail of g bank you can uh, bracket uh, the G Bank loan bracket G Bank and uh, uh, to differentiate uh, if you have another 
loan uh, from other financing institutions. Okay, that's all for now. Um, thank you for watching. I do hope this video uh, will uh, assist you to um, answer the tutorial questions. See you in another video for the next topic.